Edwin was widely considered to be one of the better actors of his time. Some even called him the best overall. With a healthy theatrical love for Shakespeare plays, he found any chance he could to get involved in one. A contestant among critics to be the finest Hamlet that there ever was and ever will be. After being selected out of a few other popular performers for the role, as well as to visit his sister, he eagerly awaited the train station. It was loud and populated with people, the air being filled with the noise and chatter among the others. The day was chilly and filled with rainfall, making the station having an almost white noise sound around it. When the train finally arrived, the crowd was all too anxious to get on and hurtled towards it, pushing a young college student near the edge of the platform. He struggled to keep his footing and stumbled onto the tracks as he lost his balance. Edwin, having witnessed this from the corner of his eye, yelled at the conductor to stop the train, but the man was unable to hear him over all the frantic noise, and it was already too late for him to do so. The train began to move, and towards the young man who was now trapped between the carts. After waiting for certain doom as the wheels began to turn before him, the man closed his eyes before suddenly being lifted and helped off the tracks quickly. The scholar recognized Edwin and called him out by name as he was lifted from the train tracks. The carts passing by as he was saved from death, lifted by the collar of his shirt. They looked at each other briefly, silent, before the schoolboy thanked him. After saving his life, after a quiet moment, Edwin introduced himself to the boy, who in turn revealed that his name was Robert. They would never see each other again. In a manner of few weeks after the incident, the President of the United States was murdered in the White House in an event that shocked the world and nation. The actor was the brother of John Wilkes Booth, who assassinated the student's father, Abraham Lincoln. She made a playful squeal as I tagged her. It was clear she was enjoying herself. She was laughing herself to tears. Daddy, stop it. My sides hurt. She continued to laugh. Her joy was contagious. I smiled. For once in years, I smiled. I dare say, I've smiled more that day than I have in my entire life. Alas, all good things must come to an end. She was tired and fell asleep shortly after. My wife came home soon. She was so glad to see me. She yelled my name, again laughing to tears. She hugged me still laughing. I continued to smile. She looked down and saw my tagging tool. Quickly shooting her focus back to my eyes, I continued to smile. Michael. Tears continued to stream down her face in excitement. How could you have done this to our little angel? She tried to run, but <laughs> she was too slow. Tag. I smiled wider. You're it. You know those sounds you hear when no one is home? Those sounds only you hear when you're alone. I do. I hear them every day. The creaking. The noises, the paranoia of my mind playing tricks on me, but is it really? What if there is someone outside of the door, waiting for me to see what that sound is? What if he's just waiting for my curiosity to take over and warp my mind into this world? He's waiting for my mind to weaken, waiting for me to fall asleep, waiting for something, for something I don't know. He's waiting. Just waiting. Have you ever woken up in the middle of the night, paralyzed by something holding you down, frozen in fear? You can't move. 
You can barely breathe and all you hear is what reminds you of that ringing in your ear that gets louder and louder and screeches and takes over your fear that makes you tremble in your paralyzed state. That noise that blocks out everything else in your mind except for your heartbeat and it terrifies you. That feeling of helplessness, knowing that whatever happens to you, whatever fate you have is in his hands. I know that feeling all too well. It terrifies me. It haunts me, but yet, it's become a part of me. Have you ever woken up in a cold sweat? Not knowing if what you just felt was a hallucination, a dream, a nightmare, some horrendous joke, or if it really happened? That feeling of relief and terror, all at the same time, that uneasy feeling of insecurity. Being afraid of the night, of sleep, of dreaming. The unexplainable pain in your heart and your spirit. That you know it happened, but you don't want to believe it. How can you believe it? It was a stupid dream, right? 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 It's taking over my mind, my life. I don't feel safe anywhere, no matter where I go, where I stay, he's there. In my head, outside my door, that creaking, those shadows, the ones outside your line of sight, he's there, he's watching. The minute you look in his direction, he won't be there, but believe me, he's watching. That uneasy feeling you get, the feeling of being watched, it's him, I know it's him. He'll always be there, laughing, laughing at your pain, at your trembling, agony, and crying. They won't believe you. No one will believe you. They know what it feels like. They know what he feels like, but they won't believe you. I tried telling them. I tried warning them. Warning them! They tell me I'm schizophrenic, but I, I, I know the truth. He's waiting. Just... Waiting. I sit up with a jolt disoriented. If it weren't for the sensation of my eyelids coming together to shield my eyes, I would not be able to determine whether or not they were open. The inky blackness presses in from all angles, suffocating me. You'd think, after all the time I've spent trapped in this murky prison, I'd have adjusted. No. It's still quite a shock to be released from the depths of unconsciousness only to be greeted by an infinite plane of shadows. I glance around, looking for something, some object from long ago that will reassure me. I need to know some of my old world still remains. Nothing. I'm alone. A white light flashes to the left of my vision, if it can be called that. I ignore it. I've come to realize that its only purpose is to generate hope of this blanket of soot lifting. I hear a creak, a door opening. Kath, you'd better get up. We're leaving for Granddad's house in about an hour. Start getting ready, okay? I sigh. Yeah, all right, Mom. Oh, and your cane and shades are in the kitchen near the birdcage. I sigh again. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed those awesome short creepy pastas. If you did, please, please, please make sure to hit that like button down below and answer my question in the comments section. I'll leave all the links to my social media in the description, so be sure to check those out too. And, as always, ladies and gentlemen, have a terrifying evening. <laughs>